Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about The Dark Knight Rises and this movie is directed by Christopher Nolan and it came out in 2012, like almost 10 years ago from the time I'm recording this and I, this was always my favorite out of the Dark Knight trilogy when I was young. It just uh, really connected with me. I really liked the story. I loved Bane as a villain. I thought he was a great villain and... There were many things I loved about it, and re-watching it, unfortunately, it turned out to be my least favorite in the Dark Knight trilogy. I still like it, but unfortunately, my biggest problem with this movie would be that out of all of the films in this trilogy, this one is the one I'm invested in the least emotionally. I was entertained throughout the movie because it was well-paced, and I liked what was going on, but... When it comes to an emotional experience, like having me attached to any of the characters, it's not really there for me, and I wished that I cared about what was going on, but I just couldn't, because as a standalone film, I don't think this movie works as well as the other two films, and I'm going to try not to compare this movie to... Batman Begins and The Dark Knight too much because I kind of want to talk about this movie as a standalone film because if I just keep comparing it to then it's just going to be a gigantic comparison video and I just don't want to do that <laughs> because compared to The Dark Knight of course it's a letdown but as a standalone movie it is a good movie it's very well acted and I really liked a lot that goes into this movie. I enjoyed the action scenes, and I liked the use of practical effects. I enjoyed how Bane was presented. I think Tom Hardy was really great as Bane, and I thought he was a great character. And Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, I, I really liked her. It's mostly a performance that I get from her. It's not really so much a character. But she's entertaining for me, and I liked uh, what they kind of did with her. <laughs> I thought the music was great in this movie. I enjoyed uh, when it was using the themes uh, from uh, the first two movies and bringing them into this movie. And I liked uh, some of the new th themes. I liked the theme for Bane and Catwoman. I thought the those were the best ones that stood out. But there is one thing about the music that kind of disappointed me. It's not that it was bad, it's just that when it was used in certain scenes like that are supposed to have a big impact, I just didn't feel anything. And I think that it's safe to say that the music was kind of manipulative, which is very sad because the first two movies, that I don't have that issue at all. Whereas this movie, I kind of have that issue. This might be my biggest issue with this movie, and that is the dialogue. I think it's pretty bad. And there's lots of cheesy lines of dialogue in this movie. And the writing on this movie is... It's like on the level of a Marvel movie, if not worse. Just the way characters talk. And it just doesn't feel like it's part of the first two movies. And although it, the first two movies did, did have uh, some cheesy lines. But I feel as though it was intentionally... You know, like written that way it was used for a joke and this movie does have jokes and I think those moments work pretty well but going back to what I was saying earlier the dialogue in the first two movies feels much more purposeful and when it when characters are talking it, it never feels as though what they're saying is unbelievable or cartoonish but in this movie I kind of get that problem Whenever characters talk, they just don't feel like they're talking like as if they're characters that existed in this universe. They just feel like cartoon characters almost. It just deflates a lot of tension for me because the trilogy was supposed to be a more realistic take on Batman. And once you get to this movie, it's like, were you trying to be more realistic or were you just... Did you just give up and just want to do whatever you wanted? Which is fine. I believe that any filmmaker should have freedom to do whatever they want as long as it's like a good idea for the movie. But for this movie, I don't think it worked. A kind of problem that I had with this movie was that I think there were too many characters. 
And I'm not trying to imply that the first two movies didn't have a lot of characters, but in The Dark Knight, there were a lot of characters, but each, but each character served a purpose, and, and they serve a purpose towards the plot, and it makes it really engaging for me. But in this movie, it's just throwing in characters, and it doesn't feel as though they need to be in the movie all that much. It just feels as though they're just trying to put in more characters to have more going on. And it kind of just pads out the runtime. Another big issue I have with this movie is the plot. And not that it was bad, it's just that how it's used is not like the first two movies. And I know I said I was trying not to compare this movie too much like the first two movies, but this this is really important to for me to say this so that you understand. In the first two movies, the plot is something that you need to pay attention to, and it's uh, what gives the movie an, ex an excuse to keep going, and if you uh, miss something, then you've missed a big part of the movie, and you need to watch the movie from beginning to end without missing anything. And that's what I think really helps out those first two movies so much, is that the plot is important. And you don't really get that in superhero movies, and that's what I really appreciated about those first two. But in this one, the plot is kind of disposable. It feels as though you could skip a few scenes, and you wouldn't really be all that lost. And really what keeps this movie going is what characters have been doing over the course of eight years since the last movie. And when I say eight years, I don't mean that this movie came out eight years after The Dark Knight. I'm saying that in this timeline, after the events of The Dark Knight, eight years have passed and now we are in The Dark Knight Rises. I think I said that right in a way that makes sense. And that's about all I have to say about The Dark Knight Rises. It might seem as though I really hated this movie, but I still like it. I think uh, the things I like about it are consistent enough uh, to the point where I can watch this movie again. It's just that there's so many problems with it. And I, I understand the people who don't like this movie at all. And it's a disappointment to compare to The Dark Knight and to some extent Batman Begins, but I still like this movie. I'll rewatch this movie along with the other two. I do feel as though it is a conclusion to this trilogy, even if it doesn't entirely succeed in being uh, the third in this trilogy. There are things that I wish could have been done better. But overall, I would say this is a good movie. Check it out if you haven't already. And with all that being said, I'm going to give The Dark Knight Rises a 7 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos as always. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you thought of The Dark Knight Rises and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Foley Nation, and I'll see you when I get my next review up, and that is going to be for Mission Impossible 3. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, thank you for watching, and have a great day.